Hey Bass Heads, it's Eric Krause with Bass Assets here with this week's Bass Break informational tip. It's a good one, so I hope you uh, will be able to check it out. Once again, I can't post more than a minute on Facebook and Instagram, so go to my YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube, look up Bass Assets. This week has to do with barometric pressure and swim bladders on bass. First off, what is barometric pressure and how do you tell whether you're in a high pressure day or a low pressure day. Before I go there, let me explain to you the effects of fish swim bladder based off the pressure. If you think of a balloon with something sitting on it and squishing that balloon down, that is what we call high pressure. If you look in the sky, there'll be no clouds. That's because the pressure is pushing all the other clouds away. It's a high pressure day. This really affects bass, especially bass in less than, say, five foot of water, shallow bass, large mouth bass, uh, especially the Florida strain bass. What that does, it makes them uncoordinated, uh, lethargic. They don't want to chase. Those would be the days that you can't catch fish on spinner baits and moving baits and things like that. Now, on the other side of that is a low pressure day. You'll find uh, that on a rainy or a cloudy or a windy day. You'll know because you'll look up and you'll see clouds that are lower than normal. Uh, when it rains, very low pressure. That's why people always say fish bite in the rain better. So remember that when you go fishing. And what, why I bring that up is because I had a two-day tournament that I was lucky enough to win this last weekend, our championship. But the two days were totally different from each other. The first day I found them uh, in the back of a creek in about four foot of water um, herded up a whole school of shad and they were schooling and having a uh, you know a, it was a it was a fun day I wore out my finger I, I caught several fish but I actually caught them on one of my new swim jigs I don't actually have them out on the market yet but they're in production now very good swim jig so I caught probably 60 bass on this had a great day um, Everything was good. I was actually one pound out of the lead after day one. So that was a good deal. Um, had a front, I don't want to say a front, had a high pressure system roll through about four o'clock, five o'clock that evening. And this was a two day tournament. So uh, I went back out there the next day and I tried to catch those fish on the swim jig again and couldn't do it. We had decided not to eat. They decided not to move. What I did end up, I ended up moving out to the first I don't want to say the first, but like the first distinct drop off point. Didn't really catch any fish all day long until about one o'clock. Um, finally moved out. I tried crankbaits, deeper crankbaits. I tried Carolina rigs. I tried everything. Nothing would work. But what I did find that would work was this three quarter ounce, three quarter ounce football jig that I make. Got some living rubber in it and some green with some red foil flake in it. And what it was, was the fish were positioned on the bottom in about 13, 14 foot of water. And the reason why is because the pressure was so high, they went deeper to avoid that high pressure so it didn't affect their swim bladder. So remember that tip whenever you're fishing and you're not catching fish. Um, I actually ended up winning the tournament on this bait right here in about an hour and a half of fishing at the end of the day when I finally found out where they were. So remember that when you go fishing next time, It'll really help you out if you look at the sky, look at the clouds. If there's no wind, and sometimes if there's wind, but if there's no clouds around, probably on a high pressure day, you might need to move out a little bit deeper, slow down, get your bait on the bottom. They didn't want anything even two feet off the bottom. So remember that and I hope that helps you out. Till next time, thank you. Yeah.